one thing you can do is you can help bring I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the title of a book here, but you can you can bring order to chaos. Is that is that a reasonable um, thing to say about what you do? That's absolutely accurate. Hi there, it's Martin from Robson Leather again. I'm here on my um, next episode to talk to Ian Warrender of Warrender Technical Services. Hi Ian, how are you doing? I'm uh, doing fine, thank you. Thank you for having me, Martin. It's good to have you, sir. Um, Ian, I've, I've asked you to come on today because one thing you can do is you can help bring, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal the title of a book here, but you can, you can bring order to chaos. Is that, is that a reasonable um, thing to say about what you do? That's absolutely accurate. That is my intention. And that is what I'm bringing to small businesses across the Northeast and the wider, wider area. Good. Okay, then. So people are probably um, thinking, well, well, how does he do that? And I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll just open with a simple question. How would you do that then? Give it, give it, give us oh. the, give us, give us the thirty second summary, the cheat sheet. What's, what's, what's the headline? The headline is that uh, I go to businesses and I help them with their organisational um, area, their processes, their systems, their um, administration. Uh, basically, at a very top level, I go into the business and see what isn't working and I provide them with the necessary skills, necessary um, systems, the necessary knowledge to enhance what they're doing to reach their potential. Um, it, it, might sound, it might sound simplistic, but people should be focused on what they're experts at, whether that is um, surveying if they're in a state agent or whether that's um, landscapers doing landscaping and but there's a lot of things that we know that business need, need to do around that such as the marketing such as uh, the um, management side of it and we try and look at how to minimize automate um, streamline all the elements that people aren't necessarily experts in and we we, we work out where those inefficiencies are within the business be that the organisations um, not structured so that the information is getting to the right people, be that whether they've got processes in, such as process maps, or be that they don't have the right systems in place. Um, so there's a wide scope and I go into business completely open and see where we where we go from there. Okay, and so so a lot, a lot of people are probably aware of this idea from the manufacturing world. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happened to me late there, but I seem to have gone um, a much softer glow there. I, I quite like it. If I could reproduce this, it's, it's a good look. I don't know how it looks to you viewers, but uh, so sorry. So the manufacturing world, people will be used to this idea of, um, is it Kaizen, you know, the Toyota factory getting stuff, continual improvement, that kind of thing. But, but, but you know, if, if I was a restaurant, you, 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 you're not skilled at running restaurants, are you? So how, how, how does this apply to any kind of business? It applies to any kind of business because no matter what the actual skill of the business is, the actual setup, the business setup, the business acumen of the of the industry has the same sort of um, the same sort of structure in terms of their inputs, their outputs, there are elements um, such as. There's processes, there's steps that people do to get from A to B, no matter what it is, be a restaurant where you're bringing in, you've got the resources of people, time, the, the uh, raw ingredients, their, their inputs, and the, all business have inputs. And then you've got the outputs of the dishes, you've got the outputs of the service level, the quality, um, you've got the reports, money, you've got the finances, um, finance side. All the elements that control a business, you've got the management side of it, so you've got staff, you've got a, a top level. All businesses on a top level are built the exact same way, and all businesses have certain levels of inefficiencies. So even though I've never, um, before this year, never supported a estate agent, for example, I can still walk into a business 
I can still look and work out what the inputs, what the outputs are, create process map, look at the, the systems in place and enhance what they're doing. Yeah. So, so again, you're not telling them how to attract clients or, you know, the, the yeah. best way to make a widget necessarily. You're, you're yeah, not, you're not designing not, yeah. the widget. What you're doing is, if you, if you know there's three steps to a widget, you make sure they're done the same three ways every time yeah. by everyone. And again, a new client coming in, you're not going to help them bring it in necessarily, but you will set a system up that takes prospects as an input and turns them as an output into clients. And, and that's exactly. that a reasonable way to say it. It is. Going back to your restaurant analogy, I'm not going in there to tell them how how the best way to make a certain dish, because that's what they're experts in. I'm not going in there to tell them how to lay up the tables in, in the restaurant. What I'm going in there to help them to, to do is make sure that the processes that they've got in place to get that raw ingredients from, the, um, from their supplier to the table is as efficient as possible without removing the creativity uh, to make sure that the systems that go in place, such as table bookings, um, such as um, the HR system they might be using for the staff coming in, make sure all those are in place so they can focus on making the best um, whatever dishes is that they're making. And I, sp I suppose one of the things you're trying to do here is um, give a business the ability to repeat, to repeat good service and also spot where the problem is in, in bad service or a good production versus bad production. If you see where it went wrong, you can change it and then everyone going forward yeah. won't suffer from that same thing. Is that one of the best? It is, and it's, and it's not just where things went wrong. And often businesses don't focus enough on what goes right and learn how to replicate what went right within the business. And so it's in terms of all continuous improvement, it's about removing um, identifiable errors. Errors are going to happen in all businesses, but um, those redu reduction in quality, once that error happens, you don't want to repeat it. And that's where businesses, um, you know, have their decline where they repeat errors that they've known that's happened. But the exact same thing on things that are positive within the business, um, such as a positive review for something happening, identifying why that positive review happened and that positive element, and then make sure that that is repeated on future projects, on future um, instances, is also a key factor. So yeah, I suppose if on one particular night, to use the restaurant analogy, all of a sudden everybody loves the chicken, need to know yeah. why all of a sudden on that night chicken was was it you know it's, well, well yeah, what did well, we do oh, well actually we've got different chicken from so oh, well let's get with chicken from there going forward it sounds basic exactly. unless you unless you document and make sure that happens the supplier the next day doesn't know to change where they get the chicken from or that kind of thing yeah. because it's it's yeah. not just about learning from these things it's presumably about making sure that everybody in the business can learn from it because it's documented yeah. and and accessible to all yeah having that communication level which is why organization is a is a part of the um my mantra now and something which i've recently added to make sure that it's not just the business owners that are aware of the processes aware of these situations make sure it's fed down to the right people so that the right people can uh, can replicate um this one of the one of the elements which i've um worked a lot on in the past seven to eight months is business owners as a whole especially during covid get got to the point where they didn't trust um their businesses when they went were on a holiday because during covid a lot of businesses owners were there 24 7 and they got used to being the uh, the port of call for everything firefighting and everything and now we're starting to get to the point where people are starting to go on holidays again. You, we've got, I've got one client that is finding it difficult to let go, um, to, um, to step away from that, doing everything um, role, checking on every single element that's um, happening within the production of the element of their business. And so giving them the power such as process maps, um, such as the right recording, and then allowing them to have the trust 
get uh, that that like, gives them to the staff means that people can actually step away from the business temporarily and the business can function just as if they were there which is a major element to small businesses have, have you seen any in businesses that were actually pretty good at these things pre-covid almost regress because the business owners had to jump in to deal with the exceptional and now the struggle to like get back out it's yeah it, it, it is it is on one part that but it's also on the businesses that basically froze during covid and they're rebuilding and in that rebuilding there is that natural ten- tendency and it's completely normal of being involved to make sure that they you rebuild the quality back in the business you rebuild the the client um the client uh, basis but at, at some point if you're gonna make a successful business you have to be able to step away enough from the business and let the staff take over and what i have seen is business owners doing all the initial stuff which is going to be absolutely natural and they're not doing the step in a way and they're wondering why when they take a week holiday in august they come back and finding that things weren't done as they expected it to be done because they've they've literally been the people that's done everything yeah i mean the classic one is well we have to stop selling chicken because nobody ordered chicken so well why did it well you normally order the chicken we don't know where you order it from yeah, I mean, that's a silly example, but it's a simple one, isn't it? It, 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 it might sound a silly example, but it is the fundamental thing of if, if a company's got a certain supplier for something and the business owner knows that, that the supplier can't do it that particular day, they go and see Dave. Um, the, the person that is then looking after the business the week doesn't know Dave and they go to the normal supplier and the normal supplier says, I, I can't do this week. Can't and also do they don't it, yeah. get there. And okay. so it is, it, it, it might sound a silly example, but it is, it is very much that sort of level of, of understanding and documenting that. Yeah, yeah, because they might know where the chicken comes from, but they don't know Dave. They don't know the day of the backup. And yeah, exactly. then just ring some random place, get some random stuff, can't order it because they haven't got a credit line set up. Or, and that's where things fall apart, isn't it? And, and it sounds silly talking about chicken, but this could be anything. This could, this could be... It could be... The yeah, material it could, that be, tense, to, it could yeah, be anything. Metal, plastic, supplier. It could even be the, the typist that someone's using on a report and a, a service supplier always goes to a certain typist. But if that typist can't um, return something in 48 hours, you go to a different typist. And so, yeah, it, it's not chicken. It's not just a restaurant. Uh, it's it's not just products. It's the surface side of it. And that's, again, why, going back to what you were saying right at the beginning, it's any industry, you know, that, that this, this applies to. And, you, you know, you've just got to look at it from a lateral point of view, not just a, well, it's a product. Well, it doesn't need to be a product. It can be a service. It can be a whatever. I, I suppose you probably get a lot of people say, well, Ian, you, you've made a very compelling reason why restaurants should have chicken. <laughs> but, but I'm not a restaurant. I don't sell anything to do with chicken. So, what, what, you know, you can't help me. And, and, and hopefully we're starting to explain to people that if you could, it's any input, any output. And an input yeah. is, it could be a physical input. It could be the end of a previous action. It could yeah. be anything. Yeah. It yeah. might be, we could be talking about contact, um, you know, prospects coming in via the website. Yeah. Through, through the contact form on the website. What do you do with it? How do you know who to book the appointment with to follow up? How does that happen? And again, that's the kind of thing where, you know, it's normally the business owner who set the website up and they're the one who gets the email. And if they're on holiday for two weeks, they don't follow up prospects, work lost. Yeah. So um, I, I, I purposely opened this with um, about kind of bringing order out of chaos because I, I, I know there's been a lot of people at the moment or, or, or over the last 18 months that have found their world in chaos. And, it, and it's interesting that you mentioned a lot of people have adapted and adapted rapidly and, and the business owner has been in, in, instrumental in that. And also people that have done nothing and were kind of hoping just to pull the shutters up again and get on with it. But they're finding that the world has changed. And, yes. uh, and, and, and yeah, you've now got to adapt again. 
do, do, do you find people who have this kind of system in place then or these kind of this kind of mapping and this kind of process do you find that they people are just more content because they know it's almost like they're being told what to do and they're happy with it because because they know that it, it's all running for a reason or yeah, when you get a process map, it gives you a number of key things. Um, one is the fact that businesses that had process maps before COVID had an opportunity before reopening or when during COVID to understand how to morph their business. And so one of the key things which I'm um, uh, involved with is the virtual mapping of changes and so you've got a process map in place of how the business currently was as it, as in the case before covid and then we've got what and what the effects remote working um reduced staff and um, changes in systems whatever it is what is the impact on the business uh, from that and we can look at what the most likely is in terms of the process and then we put that in place we put that new process in place and we see how it works and from there in terms of the general continuous improvement what there'll be some elements that we got completely right and there'll be some elements that didn't work and a lot of that at the minute is to do with a redu reduction in staff and so a got a landscaper that before COVID had three teams they're now down to one team and that one team basically it's meant that um, they've had to uh, change the scheduling and so their scheduling now going out to six months when it used to be three months and so the communication to the customer changes and all this type of thing we can map out the process map before we put it in place and then when we put it in place we then look at what works and what doesn't work without that what you what you end up with is guessing almost and although people are very good at understanding how the business works it's not as easy to guess how the world is going to work how the how that's going to adapt with the rest of it and that becomes chaos that that returns back to that point in chaos because yeah you're on the fly all the time that x doesn't work so you change something but do you know that 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 element you're changing was the right element to change do you know that that then yeah, you make another change but you're moving further away from the perfection or you're moving further towards chaos and sometimes you hit lucky and sometimes you completely don't and that that, that you're not the minute where certain business are knife edged, you know, that, that's that's the type of thing that can shut businesses down, you know, if they're not looking at, at the way that they're gonna function properly. And so process maps for me is at the minute, a where always a, a key foundation of the business to make sure that business is scalable, you know, and it can be adaptable. So, so you mentioned their foundation of a business in that you, you're not just talking about big business here then? No, I'm talking about all businesses. Um, for, for businesses, you need some key foundations in place to make sure that you know where the business is going. You need some, uh, some goals, some aims. You need a vision for the business um, so that you know what the business is there for, you know, uh, I, I, I always say that there's no point just having a business for the sake of it. You need to have a, a goal, a vision for the business, a reason why it exists. Once you go from there, you need to know what the business is doing. And that's where the process map comes in to know what and how it's doing it. And so, you know, beyond that, you then build the systems around that. There's no point in having the systems in place before you know what your processes are. And so the process for me comes first as a foundation and then the systems sit on top of that, which is why, you know, the, the base foundation of the, of the business beyond the vision and goals. And, and you mentioned there about scaling. It, it, I, I, I presume the reason it's easier to scale with the map in place is you can sit a new starter down and almost let them get on with it because the process is written Every, everybody knows what to do it's a bit uh, if you imagine a a business and this business doesn't exist but if you imagine a business had five steps in it for example um you start off a new business 
it's just you, you do five steps. That's never going to happen in business, but let's just take it as a, a example. You then decide to expand and then you're going to give um, two of those steps to some new people. You're going to expand those step, those two steps out to three more steps because you're going to do some more complex things in there. So you start off with five steps. You've now up to 11 steps because those two of those steps are now three. You're now wanting to have a marketing department. So you take two of those steps completely off and move them into a marketing um, step. And then you expand those out. With a process map, it's like a tree. You know, you start off with a simple sapling, and as things expand, um, as the business expands, they become branches uh, in their own right, uh, their own elements of the business, and the process map builds on from that. But you need the process map to start off with to know which elements you're going to give off to people, which elements um, are going to be done by people, and then which elements are then going to be separated off into departments as your business becomes successful. On, on day one, of course, Ian, the only person who can do any of this if it's a single person business is that person. But going forward, it's probably a good idea to get more people involved, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what what the, the current uh, normal growth pattern is that you have one person, that one person then gets something like a virtual assistant involved. And that virtual assistant, if you imagine, won't have, they'll have lots of businesses to deal with. They won't have your expertise. They won't be, they usually won't be from your industry, um, unless you have a particularly, you know, industry focused VA. And so you've got to have a way of communicating to your virtual assistant what it is that they, the steps that they need to be doing what it is, how they want to imp, um, um, interact with either the clients or yourself, and process map is absolutely vital for that. Then you might want to get somebody actually in the business. You might want to start hiring one or two people if you're growing. And again, that's where you can give them, you know, you can sit down with the process map. If you imagine having a blank piece of paper, so someone comes in, you don't give them anything, you just sit down and you start talking to them, well, do this, do that. They don't have the sense of what the business looks like. They don't know where they sit within the business. The process map gives them that. So you still want the verbal communication there, but you want to be able to sit and point at something and go, this is where you sit in the business. This is what you'll be given. This is the outputs I expect at the end of it. These are the steps. Now, if somebody you're hiring someone really good, they'll look at that process map and go, why don't we do it this way? Well, they could say that because they're looking at the process map. If you're just verbally talking to them, they don't know what, what, what your setup is. And so their interactions, as you know, won't be as good. Then you go to 10 people, 15 people. Down the road, you've got 1,000 people. You've got multiple departments. You want to replicate how those work, and you do that through process maps. Yeah. Okay, then. So, so, so that's the evolution from one to many. What if you're already many, and you haven't got any of this in place, and on... The levels of chaos were at maximum chaos at the minute. Who 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 would be the right person to? Obviously, the the, the person who writes the checks has got to agree to this. But where, where where do you start? You start with someone independent, and uh, my recommendation is myself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but truly independent the, there, though. Well, well, well yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it needs but it needs to be someone independent. Now, independent doesn't necessarily mean external to the business. You can hire somebody and you can hire them to be independent within the business. But they need to be independent in the fact that they can make comments and um, they can make instructional changes to the business without being impacted by... Um, external influences of how the boss wants to do things. You need someone and, 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 that can and you actually... Can't, you, can't, you can't get Dave to do it if he's best mates with Betty from another department. You, you, you need someone yeah. who doesn't have those old allegiances. Those, exactly. Who can step back and take in a, 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 a fresh eye kind of view, don't you? Exactly. And the, the main thing that that independent person does is, first of all, identifies through either the owner of the business, depending on how large it is, or the departmental uh, managers, and work out what they think is happening within the business, what, what their impression is in terms of how they feel that the processes should be done. You map that out and you ask them all the critical questions. 
Um, if somebody is saying we do this and then we do this, you then go, well, how do you get from A to, to D? Where you're missing a few steps here. That doesn't naturally go. You make sure that all the critical questions in there, I always say it's a binary decision point. Decisions should always be yes, no, and then you work out where you go from there. But once you get what they think is happening, then you take a sample of the staff, depending on, again, the size of the business, but you then follow the process through with them and see if that's how reality is, if that's actually how things work on the ground. Usually there won't be, there used to be a disconnect and that disconnect will be where a lot of the inefficiencies are, um, where you see this hour, hour, if I can say the word, hourglass approach, where basically you've got certain things that go in and then you've got a key thing where everything goes through and then things go out. And it's like that key point where the inefficiencies are, where you go, we need to separate these out to multiple streams so that you've got some parallel actions and you've not just got that hourglass approach. And so it's discussions then between the managers, between the people that's doing the thing and making sure what reality is. And reality may not be efficient initially. And that is something that business owners as a whole find difficult to understand that you'll start off with the process that's inefficient to allow you then to move to the efficient value stream mapping uh, for larger businesses. Um, and yet having that honest approach of what reality is and not just, well, this is how we do it. I think that's not how you do it. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think people in business often, well, anybody who does anything, I suppose, often has a way of simplifying in their own mind what it is that happens. Yeah. Um, wh wh whereas, and I think an analogy you've given in the past is, you know, making tea. You could literally say boil kettle, put bag in cup, put water on bag, take bag out of cup. Yeah. There we go. But what happens if someone wants white tea? Well, there's a step, there's a variation. What if they want strong or weak? Sugar, no sugar, sweetness. Where's mm -hmm. the tea kept? You know, what? how many tea bags do you put in? Again, it, it feels simple, but you have to set Which out... Which shop do you, buy the, 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 what, what do you buy the tea bag from? Um, do you need to make... Do you go to five shops and um, identify which one's got the cheapest um, tea in... Um, are you using filtered water in the kettle? Are you using tap water in the kettle? Um, are you using a pan of water to buy? The variations are so extreme that, yeah. you know, it's important to try and identify what the key, what the key steps are to make that, make that tea. And, you know, it'd be the, 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 the brand of tea bags or the, um, how long you leave the tea bag in the cup for, you, you know, there, there'll be key things and it's identifying what the key things are, not everything. And, but you I, know, I, I, um, one thing that... I, th I, th I think a lot of people um, underplay the power of consistency because everyone knows the McDonald's brand. Everybody knows there's a McDonald's everywhere. You can, you know, fall out your door and land on a McDonald's in most places. Um uh, and I think the thing that might surprise a lot of people is it won't, well, it won't surprise them. People don't go there for the food. They go there because they know the food is the same in every version of a McDonald's. So yeah. we've talked about making a cup of tea there. You get a coffee in any McDonald's. It's always the same. And, and, and it's almost that consistency that people are buying into, I think, more than, I don't think there's anybody who would agree or what was the, uh, you know, I know that's Burger King, but nobody would say that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the that's best Burger King. they've ever had. But, yeah. but they know that if you go to Burger King, get a Whopper or a Big Mac from McDonald's, it's always the same, isn't it? And they're taking a relatively unskilled workforce yeah. often and then upskilling them within that narrow niche to, to deliver that perfect service the same way every time. Exactly, exactly. But one thing you have to be careful of is some people see process maps as a, a reduction in creativity and that's not where you know not not where coming from Pro creativity does have a place in in process maps and so you won't see that in burger king you won't see that in mcdonald's you won't see somebody um, deciding to put the mayo in a particular shape on on the burger or anything like that but outside of you know that 
where you come to a business where there's some artistic element in it, you allow that artistic freedom in it. So if we go back to the cup of tea, you don't say how many times you stir the cup. You know, you might you might say stir the cup, but you leave how many times to stir to, you know, the person. Similarly, if you've got a, a art um, process, you may have all the process maps for getting the materials for the art. You might get a process for how to um, go to a particular site to, you know, to do the art. But you're not going to say how to actually do the brush strokes on the art itself. You're not going to say the sky should be this exact um, binary digit, uh, digit of a code of, for the colour. So creativity is still you know it's still a, a vital part um, of that i guess if you go back to the burger king example you know you'll still allow the person to have to introduce themselves in a certain way at the till there'll be still some elements of creativity although they try and remove that as much as they can from fast food and and, and actually um i, I witnessed a, a, a very brief education slot from you at a, at a separate thing today um, about Eddie, Eddie Izzard, which feels relevant here, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to formulate the link. But Eddie Izzard and most comedians know exactly what they're going to say. They know they're going to tell the story about, you know, the church first, then about the bus, and then how they went to school. Exactly how they tell the story is going to vary very slightly. But most people will see what feels like a completely impulse-driven, you know, hour on this on the stage. Yeah. Actually, ninety-five percent of those words were very well scripted, well learned, and and but and then with just the variance based on the type of crowd you're faced with on a particular night, um, or based on a heckle from a and, and it, you can't take that out without you get too robotic, don't you? So you process yeah, exactly. That greet the customer it's up to you how you greet them if you're a chirpy person you go how are you doing you had a good weekend but you don't want to make miserable people greet like that and you don't want to make happy people be miserable so greet the customer is all you need to say you don't tell them exactly what to say do you no exactly and Eddie Azard is a perfect example because he does this rambling thing in between the jokes and the jokes themselves are very formulaic, although he sell, tells them extremely well. But that rambling element that builds up to the joke makes it feel like he's completely original on the night, that you're the only one seeing this. And unless you've sat the night before and gone through the exact same type of thing, it feels completely, you know, made up. Um, but I, I'm just thinking literally off the top of my head now. It's very similar when you go and see Pantos at um, the um, Theatre Royal. There'll be things in there that will go wrong, that will feel impromptu because they go wrong. But if you see enough of them, um, especially with Danny Adams and um, who, whoever else is there, you'll notice they go wrong the exact same every single year. And those elements that go wrong are scripted, but the script in a way that you don't actually you don't actually recognize. And the, you know, very similar in process maps where not necessarily things go wrong, but things go right, you replicate them, you know, in the same sort of way because you know they have a certain reaction. Yeah. But it's also worth bearing in mind as well. I mean, we, we were talking about this about a script for a for a meeting. Um, the person reading the script has the script people listening wouldn't know if you've mixed a couple of words around or changed the order slightly as long as you're given the overall tone. And I suppose that's 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 the thing here, isn't it? There's still a, you still greet people when they turn up, you still take them through the steps and you, and you wish them well on the way at the end. But exactly how you do it doesn't have to be... Yeah. Yeah, because all I'm hearing you see is I, I, I'm imagining being a creative business going, we can't schedule how this happened. You can't tell me how to make sure I design a good poster for a business. And, and, and you're not. But what you're doing is you're saying, well, make sure you've quoted for the poster. Make sure you've given them an estimated delivery date for the poster. Ask them what size, where it's going to be. Got a brief from them. Ask them if they've got any branded colours that they want incorporated, any key strap line, and then make a poster. And that bit, you do whatever you want. That's you're the creative. But making sure that the you got the input, making all those things you mentioned there, 
make sure you've got that input before you start because the last thing you want to do is get halfway through the poster and you realize that you didn't include the the branded color because you 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 didn't ask them that um, and then you have to restart and make sure that you plan the right time in so that you're not just you haven't quoted 20 posters for the end of a certain a week and realize that you physically can't fit that in there's all sorts of um, elements that will go through the business. When you get to making the poster part, absolutely use your creativity and everything else. Within reason, obviously, you don't want to use your creativity and um, spend 40 hours on the perfect poster that you're only actually charging five hours worth of time for. And so there are elements within that where you're checking yourself and make sure that you've got, um, you're making money on it. But the wording on it, where you fit the words, no, you, you won't be putting that in a process map. Yeah, everything yeah. leading in, everything going out of it. And again, it's uh, going right back to what I said at the beginning. It's about allowing people to do what they're experts in. People are experts in making that poster, the artistic side of it. Well, allow you to focus on that. Everything else around that just make sure that it's in place. It's as automated as possible. You get the input, maybe you give them a form. So you have a form filled out. That person comes in and says, this is my brand. And here's a, a logo. I'm going to um, pass that. Here's some list of questions. So what size do I want? Do I want some A4? Do I want some A5s? Make sure all that is done as automated as possible, least involved, and then you get on with making the poster. Yeah, and, and actually, you, you see this exactly on um, websites now where you can go on and get an embroidered shirt or whatever. You pick the shirt, you pick where you want it, you send them the logo, they check the logo on, on the uploading of the file, they give you a price, because that's all. And all someone's got to do is put the right shirt in the machine at the back end, throw it in a bag and put it in the post. Everything else just happens. And, and, yeah. and there's a lot of businesses now that exist, you know, Amazon, Dropbox, and, and all this kind of they, they purely exist because someone's come up with a process map that, that can be repeated as many times as they want with just then minimal human input at the back end, haven't they? So Exactly. And the, thing, and the thing is that small businesses can do that just as well as the big businesses. With small businesses, you might want to have a bit more customer input in terms of some communication to allow the person to feel like they're actually interacting with somebody because that's the power of the small businesses. But in terms of getting that information from them, in terms of uh, the collation and everything else like that, you can automate that and you can have that as efficient as the large businesses, which just may be a bit more um, customer input a conversation there to make the customer feel like they're, you know, that they're valued. And, um, you know, some little thing at the end to make sure that they feel like, you know, they've, they've helped the local uh, community, you know, that type of buy local type thing. But you can still do all the automation part in addition to that. Yeah. Well, listen, Ian, I've, I've taken up quite a bit of your time. Um, you've got some upcoming courses or events to, to give people a taste around this. And then you've got some other events. Do, do you want to just give, give, give us the 10 second version? Of, of what you're hoping to get across to people in these little sessions. Absolutely. So um, coming up on Wednesday, the 25th of August and Friday, the 3rd of September, I've got a one hour course um, at one o'clock going through the uh, process maps, the foundation of your business, where I go through in detail why process maps are vital um, to any business. Then in September, from the 20th to 24th, I've got a week-long course where I'll actually take uh, businesses through how to create process maps and um, how to actually formulate them, what questions you should be asking, um, what's, how you should do those steps. And that's a week-long course. Everything's in Eventbrite. And so if people go to Eventbrite, they can um, access those courses and join me. And then every Friday at two, uh, two to three, um, I've got planning sessions. And so this is where I um, help businesses um, with their next week's plan. And so this isn't what they should be planning, it's how they should be planning. 
because one main reason why I'm starting this is businesses have lost their long-term goals. And so because of where COVID are, people are just firefighting every single week and they're not actually moving to the next step. And so we look at what the long-term goal is and how to bring that into the week plan so that they're not just um, recycling every week, they're actually moving the business forward. Great. Okay, then Ian, listen, I, ho I hope um, people out listening to this and watching this have found that useful. Um, I know it's a topic that could easily, well, it, it, we could we could go on. It's it's something I'm always. I could go on. I know that. Systemizing. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I, you know the idea of systemizing, and and, and and the irony is a lot of businesses say you can't systemize what I do. They have a system. It's just not documented. So if you think you can't systemize it, well, yeah, you, you, you unless you're making it up randomly every time which yeah. wouldn't be a very good way to run a business. So we're not talking about here about um, anything rocket science, really, not yeah. to do with a disservice. We're talking about just actually documenting what it is you already do. Um, yeah. But I hope people have found that useful. Um, catch Ian at um, Warrior Technical Services. Where, where, whenever you want to, reach out, and um, I'm sure you'll be happy to help. Thank you very Thanks much, Martin. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.